Hey, welcome to Talking Hawks. I'm Brad. We've got Chris and Matt. How are you, boys? Howdy. Yep. How are you? Doing yeah, well. Good. Oh, I'm doing better. It's taken me a whole 24 hours to get that game out of my system. Um, but boy, it was a, it was a good game. If you're an outsider looking in, it, what a game! Oh, was a cracker. You, you predicted it almost, didn't you? You, you expected us to come out fighting and uh, with the upset, and we nearly got it. We we should have got it. We should have, but unfortunately, we were playing against 25 players against our 22. <laughs> Yes, yes. yes. I'm sure we, you're not the only one screaming that, but yeah. Uh, but it's good to see some fight, isn't it? With uh, and, and taking the game on, like this is what we started with, the promise at the start of the season, these youngins. Oh, uh, yeah, mate. Just I, burning so much energy chasing the opposition when, when we were controlling the ball. It, it makes a huge difference. Mm. Uh, Cousins. Look, it, yeah. It's the best I think we've, I've seen us play was, it, was that game. I mean, we, we lacked a, a little bit of polish um, in some areas, but, man, our, our endeavour, those young blokes were just – it was so good to see them play, and, and how good were they? And CJ, how good was he? Oh, oh brilliant. Loving fantastic. it. Fantastic. Absolutely. Thought we want to see, like, he, he hasn't missed a beat. He does the same thing in the VFL. He's strep, stepped up straight to AFL level and just plays the same way. That's what you want to see. I've got one or two things on CJ, but we'll, we'll get to that. So, uh, g'day fans, uh, Lucky, Micah, uh, and the regulars. It's it's good to have you on board. We're, Brad, you've taken us to a new level tonight. Where are we yep. tonight on social media? We're everywhere. Yep, boys, we're, uh, tonight we're on Twitter and we're on YouTube. So if you're joining us from those platforms, welcome. Uh, hey. It's good to have you here. So, um, yeah, it's, a, it's very exciting. We're, we're expanding a bit of glo global domination here, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> just quietly, just, well, just quietly. paving paving the way because next year's the year that the Hawks are going to be really firing. So we need to have that all set up this year. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, if you like the new setup that we've got, let us know in the uh, comments section. It's great to have you here joining us. So, um, look, let's go straight to the game, boys. The elephant in the room, uh, and it's coming off the feed a bit here. Um, Caden West has asked, uh, "What thoughts on the free kicks? Do you think it had that much of an impact, boys?" I yeah. think our ribs are that sore. We got kicked that much. It was uh, it was not funny. Oh, mate, I was filthy. I was absolutely filthy. That time that um, that big uh, man machine who had his shirt taken off had his elbow in Stratton's face while he was on the ground and mm. not one call for it, and it was just play on. They go on and kick a goal. Oh, I was absolutely ropeable. I was just filthy at that. And I, all I could think is, AFL, please explain. Please explain. I'm not too like you're going to have some bias calls for and against, but the big one for me was the 250 meter penalties on our uh, Burgoyne. I right, don't think ridiculous. either of them justified 50, and the one cost us a goal. So yeah, yeah that yeah. one hurt. So, so what, one of the uh, Twitter um, dudes that I sort of keep an eye on, uh, Hawks free kicks. So days since Hawthorne won a free kick count. So we, he's put it up. 20 hours ago, 154 days since Hawthorne won a free kick count. So <laughs> there you go. There's the summary right there. Thank you, fella uh, or lady, whoever you are, lady. Uh, what have we got? Hawk, at Hawk free kick. Yeah, I, it was pretty disturbing, fellas. Uh, look, that aside, you know what I liked about it? Even though we all those free kicks were going against us, the boys didn't drop their bundle once. And all yeah. last year... And this season, anytime the free kicks really start going against us, we drop our bundle, they roll over the top of us, and it did not happen at all this year. Considering how young the blokes are and they kept going, it was just such a delight to watch. And I, and at no stage up until probably the last minutes did I not feel like we could still win that game. Yep. And and you give uh, yep. give them a chance and they're going to um, play out of their skin to try and hold their spot and know that they've got something to prove looking into next year, which is great. Yeah, and um, Matty, one of your favourites was there um, as well, down in the back line, uh, filling in for Frawley. Oh, hearts. Hearts. Yes. hearts. The big hearts. He did well. Yeah. Do you know what? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I think um, strength, smarts, calm was there. It's hard to tell yeah, about the composed. boys, but, yep. but that's what he, he's well known for. Uh, the one, uh, Frost, they, were, they, they bombed it one one time long. I think it might have been in the third, uh, second, third quarter. Um he got he gave away a free kick to Dixon, 
he was just trying to get in the way for Frost um, coming through, which uh, apart from that, geez, he, he had a very, very good debut for the Hawks. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And look, um, Stratton was a bit rough. He got double teamed throughout the whole game. Um, I, I thought Patton played a great game. He was in the right spots at the right time, made a contest, took a contested mark, but he was double teamed the entire time. So double considering teamed. he was double teamed, he was just coming back. I thought he did well. Double teamed and forearm to the head. But that was the biggest body slam. That was a 120 kilo body slam from uh, Dixon yeah. as well that the refs, uh, I mean, the ups didn't uh, see. Oh, the the worst one, the one, one of the worst calls I saw was when Pepper um, uh, did that sling tackle on McAvoy, uh, and it wasn't even called. wasn't even a free kick. It was nothing. He got fined for it, right? And, yeah, and I yeah, think he might have even got suspended. But it wasn't even a free kick. It's like, what what is going on in this game? It was just yeah. absolutely dangerous and disgraceful. Yeah. Hard so to just watch. to finish on Hartley, absolutely loved the long kick, the big mm. kick out from full back it was an extra 10 meters and it just makes a huge impact on on the flow of the play yeah he's love probably it. Six, 65 odd I, I would have thought that that yep. league brilliant <laughs> he's brilliant i look i really liked him and i thought you know he's a great backup player um for frawley uh and you know I, look i don't know if he'd be a permanent guy on the side unless frawley retired this year but uh, for, for my liking i thought yep any day frawley's down he can step up into that role yeah, I've got the, uh, I've got that fella um, that I was just talking about. I might, I might just quickly bring it up if I can, give you a little little glimpse of uh, Stratton copping one to the to the head there. Oh, Sorry, yeah. a little bit unprofessional, but there it is. Uh, that's a, that's a yeah, big that was my, lot of weight so was right Bixen, there, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He was completely elbowing him in the head and nothing, yeah. and, and we're giving a little like shove, and it's free kick and fifty meters. I liked that the boys came in straight in. I think they, uh, I'd like to think that they're playing because they really want to um, show something, but they're obviously getting up for strats as well, being captain 200. Nice seeing the boys on the, seeing the bus, uh, saying goodbye to him on the bus as well. Tops off, strats 200. Yeah, yeah. See that one? That was great. Yeah, that yeah. was good. Now, um, let's talk about uh, the, the, the absence of Sicily and Omira. Did we miss them? Oh, Sicily for sure. Well, although we held up quite well, you missed him. Yeah, Scrimshaw yeah. did very well. He was Scrimshaw. Phenomenal. How good he, was Scrimshaw, boys? Playing that uh, overhead marking intercept um, again. Good leg on him. It's it's he understands the role. This is probably all Australian, but I think for someone to, to step into it straight up, he's done very well. Absolutely. He's, he's probably not 10 kilos lighter, but he, he looked about 10 kilos lighter than Sis. <laughs> I just... And my heart flutters when I see him running because he just looks like virtual as well, the yeah. way he runs, his gait. And I'm like, oh. And then that kick, it's just beautiful. And his use of the ball. It's, yeah, it yeah. was it was outstanding. I, I, Scrimshaw, I am absolutely loving Scrimshaw. He's one of my favourite players. And uh, Will Day, how good was Will Day? Oh, it gets better and better every day. Love it. It. It's yeah, surely a few, words, he, a few words to describe him. Uh, if you're on the line, what what are you thinking of of uh, Mr. Day? Surely he's got to be nominated for a uh, rising star this year. Surely he has to be. Yeah, yep. he's he's one of the best young players that have come into Hawthorne since Warple. So I mean, we, when we saw Warple, we were like, "Whoa, that was good." I'd actually say that Day is better than Warple. He's had Probably a pretty more impressive start. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Without no, a doubt. Desperation, smarts, uh, like just the smothers. Like his yeah. tackling, his anticipation, that, that delivery again, very good, very good. And, and boys, look, when we're going through challenging times like this, I think for any supporter, what they want to see is what, what have we got coming through, what's next? And, and I'd say that this weekend was when we started to get a glimpse of the next generation and what's coming through, and I got excited. I was very mm. excited about what I was seeing. CJ, Will Day, um, and even um, uh, young, uh, what's his name? I just mentioned him. Um, our Cousins, midfielder, uh, Warple. Uh, Warple, he was great too. I loved Warple um, and what he was doing. With with the absence of Amira, he stepped yep. up and he was yep. great. He was really, really good. A little bit more so, from, room for him to uh, stretch the wings. Hey, I think uh, to your point there, Aaron Bradley, if you can find that one, it's uh, he's saying Sicily not intercepting the ball made us quicker out of the back line, quite possibly. Um, good spot, Aaron. Yeah, yep, fair point. 
Yeah. Hey, that. And then Aaron, uh, Aaron oh, Pauling. Sicily really makes a bad decision, though. But, yeah, yeah, the quicker ball movement was good for us. Yeah. Love that. Cousins well. made, yeah, Aaron Pauling says Cousins made Jager look not needed. Interesting. Do you think Cousins was that good? I, I think he used the ball well. He was just smart and didn't need to bomb away. He just, you know, weighed up his options and picked the right one. And instead mm. of kicking long into the forward line, he lowered the eyes and hit a short mm. up target. And it was just, just better. Our yep. delivery into the forward line, yeah, it was better. Uh, and that's right, Gunston was out too. Thanks, Mel. Um, I, I forgot about that. I didn't even realise he wasn't there. Our and forward probably. line actually yep. looked dangerous for the first time in, in a long time. I don't think that's because Jager was missing. I think it's because Patton was in the team and yes. and that he was getting double teamed. So that freed the rest of the players up. And he was, you know what he I, was a point to kick on. to as well. Yeah, like not just the target though. He was running under it a few times. I think Brownie mentioned that on the commentary on Foxtel. But I liked the a few occasions where he just uh, brought the ball in front and he was quick. If he went down, he was up on his feet again quickly and, and involved again in the play a couple of times. So really good signs from the big fella. Mm. Now, now Lockie Barker's asked a good one. Um, and he says, your guys' thoughts on Frost. Um, Lockie, he's become one of my favourite players, Frost. Anytime he touches it, I get bloody excited. Yeah, well, he, he stepped it up in the absence of Frawley. He, he played on a gorilla and he, he did quite a good job. <laughs> it's, yep. Yeah, because none of them got off. No one got off the leash with Port Adelaide. Like they absolutely had to fight tooth and nail for every score that they got. Considering their top of the ladder and their win rate at the moment, they're in, they're, they're doing fantastic. They're coming off a loss uh, and they, we knew they were going to bring it. They had to fight absolutely tooth and nail for every single goal. And Frosty... Mm just burst out of the back line and made things happen. I love Frost, and any time he touches it, I get excited. Yeah. Do you think we may have uh, used that blueprint from their loss the week before? Do you think we implemented any of that game plan or game style into our game? Uh, I'm not sure. What do you think, Chris? Not sure, but obviously something clicked and something worked. The only other thing in my head is Strat's 200th and Clarko's just gone, look, boys. You can't walk off the ground and look him in the eyes and say you haven't tried your hardest. Mm. So I think that's well, what all, everyone that was on the ground played played that way, and that's that's what you want to see every week. Oh, it's hard not being at the ground, but I think that's a bit of the fast break, fast ball movement, take the game on that we were uh, promised in the off season that Clark was working on. So this, when the ball hit a pack, the there was I, I think we actually were hesitant to take it first i think we were ready poised to tackle and put pressure on and i think that made a big difference and we then once we numbers at the ball every did, other week we, it seems like we've been outnumbered every single contest and it seemed like we had the numbers this time yeah and it's usually ping 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 a few handballs around the hawks and and the way the other team goes this time that was us for sure so uh i, I don't know uh, i think it was that game plan i don't i didn't watch paul the week before to answer your question but um good time yeah i don't know I'm not sure. Look, there was one stat that stood out to me, and I haven't got it here in front of me, but I was watching it during the game, is that we were getting a lot of our goals from the centre square, from the centre clearances. Love it. That is saying something, right? Yeah. Our, our um, midfield. McAvoy. McAvoy yeah. Was, yeah. Um, season high. Hit outs to advantage of 17. Well, it was competition uh, high. Competition high. Competition high season high. It was... Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, Nat Nui was holding the record uh, up up until last week against Ben McAvoy, and Ben yeah. McAvoy has come out and gone bang. Still I'm, got it. I'm the one who's going to hold that record. Yeah, he still has right. it. So um, he was good. To your point, uh, clearances: Mitchell five, Warple four, Bruce three, Cousin three, uh, Day McAvoy Shields two. Uh, so yeah, great, great effort, and it's making me uh, seriously question Segler. Um, I, I, I'm not seeing him giving us anywhere near as much as McAvoy, and I know it might shorten McAvoy's career, but I'm all for either big boy for a, a couple of years just, you know, going hard, and we've groomed the next uh, ruck, mm -hmm. um, get some get some value for Segs as much as uh, he's had a crack and he's been given the, the, the mantle this year. It just hasn't worked. Well, um, um, JCA off, off, JCA's yeah, off Twitter said, so can we talk about O'Brien and do we persist? Um, to that point, I would say, no, I don't think we should persist. And I actually think that is where 
um, you, Segler comes in, Matt. I, I think Segler is, is a key part of our structure and is part of the future, and we do keep him in. And as a swingman to the forward line, we have Segler there or McAvoy so, in the forward so line. So Tim's handy down back if we need it. He doesn't pinch hit ruck very well, or he hasn't in the games that I've watched him. Uh, Segler doesn't, he, he's more one-dimensional, and he's actually not taking that many grabs. Uh, that and half forward spot's up for grabs for mine. Yeah, look, if well, Patton's yeah, there... Mitch, Mitch Lewis played uh, the best on, well, yeah, yeah, great game in the scratch match. So just uh, disappointing. They seem to go down to that level, dominate, and they come up to AFL and just don't perform that well. Frustrating. Yeah, and they, they, need a, they need a number of games to have a good chance to get that, find their feet, get that momentum, get the confidence up. But it's, it has moved a lot. Tim's probably very fortunate right now, which we've touched on with injuries. So I think he... I'd probably persevere with him than what I've seen. I've been happier with him than what I've seen from Lewis. He he just doesn't have a lot of upside, right, Tim, Tim O'Brien? I just unless he can hold a mark, I'm not seeing any upside. And, and until I start seeing him holding some marks, um, then I, I'm not. There's no more upside. I don't think you can get any more out of Tim O'Brien. It, like that's that's it. I think he's reached his his limit. And if he can hold a mark. All of a sudden, he's a very exciting prospect. But until he can do that, he's reached his limit as far as I'm concerned. I just don't think we're going to get anything out of him. I love the guy. I love how hard he works. He's always in the right spot. But he just cannot hold the ball. And that's a big problem for us. So It's, it's mixed from the fans on, on the line. It's very mixed with Tim or, or Lewis. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And look, Lewis, Lewis has been really disappointing this season. He, I, I just haven't seen him have one game. Whereas at the end of last season, I was getting really excited. So, and it, but it's I know it's easy for me to get excited, right? So, um, so hey, off the the thing, Dave Cochran. Hey boys, I liked seeing Daniel Howe out there too. Da How good was Daniel Howe? Yeah, we, great. Yeah, it was great. You're on him now, Brad. I You're am on him. I am. <laughs> he just he just slipped in like he'd never been away, and he uh, played like a seasoned veteran. I've yep. liked him for the last three years and you've been really harsh towards him, I thought. And so you're seeing a bit of what he's got in him. He, yeah, like he was just solid and consistent and, and his ball use was great. Um, yeah. So Hard body. Yeah, he is. He's a big boy, isn't he? Like yeah. He's kind of like the next Liam Shields to me. Like He's never going to be anything fancy or, or flash, but he's just a, a good journeyman. Um, yep. Yep. I, I, don't, I can't ever see him... Um, ever becoming an All Australian, um, but I certainly think that he's uh, he's good enough, and he just slots in and does. His, he's a good role player. Yeah, important role. Brad I guess previously yeah. he's predominantly a midfielder, and it looks like he's taken more of a, a halfback slot now. So maybe they've groomed him a bit more for to play that role. Maybe, maybe he yeah. hasn't got that engine. Yep. Ma yeah. Maybe I don't know. Um, so J George Mehas is saying that Mitchell's starting to find his Brownlow form. Would you agree with yeah. that, boys? Uh, definitely his best game back. Uh, 11 tackles. That's phenomenal for him to go with his 25 touches, 15 handballs. I'd still like to see uh, a few more kicks, but I suppose, yeah, we'll take a, a handball to a, a person who can kick the ball a bit better. He's picking yeah. up, not Brownlow for mine, and uh, I like him handballing rather than kicking because he's usually costs it up a bit. Um, boys, our link up. Our link-ups with our handballing last night was exciting. And yep. it's like it's finally working. This is the Hawthorne that I remember where we're making these plays on the run. We're running in packs and we're handballing it to each other and we're getting it into space. It was exciting. For the first yep. time this season, that's that's the Hawthorne I haven't seen for over um, two seasons. And, and, and it if it exciting. moves... Yeah, and if it moves fast, that's where Mitchell can be effective because he's got those smarts, but he was 76% disposal efficiency. If we've got a stats person on the on the line that you can quickly look it up, I'd love to know what his uh, disposal efficiency was in his uh, brown like you. Mm. Yeah, okay. All right, so Tim Bowering is saying, uh, play Sicily and Impy forward next year. We need the flare up there. Um, CJ Scrimshaw, Hardwick, Day and Frost give us plenty of rebound. Oh, interesting. What do you think about that, boys? Well, if Scrimshaw is going to take that um, loose player role where he's just picking off the ball. He reads the ball well, uses the ball well. Yeah, Sicily is more, much more dangerous up forward. I'd, I'd I like, there. yeah, I'd, I'd like the sound of that. I'm, I'm happy with Hardwick and Impey. I'd, 
those two, you know, rotate through uh, centre half forward, centre half back, or, or maybe even half in a pocket. It, look, I don't mind. I don't mind it. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm married to Sicily being down back now. I see why he's put there, and I like it. And I'd have, I'd have a lot of trouble divorcing from that. I'm sorry, boys. So um, I, I think um, Sicily down back he is the rock for us. He's the future Stratton. So, so can down I, back. Can I have my, can my little, can I have my little wind up here? I, I was before he did the knee. I was going to talk about the unthinkable. So I'll go there. Back in the day, we traded uh, two untouchables, Jonathan Hay and Trent Crowe. We ended up getting Mitchell, Hodge, uh, and a bloke by the name of Bailey that all got premierships. And um, look, it's it's harsh now probably talking about it, but uh, I think we do have to look forward at what options there might be, and you don't want to trade your best player, especially when there's a bit of uh, promise coming from the youngsters. But... Um, yeah, it, it's and he's a very likable fellow, but I think we have to have a serious look over the next few weeks about the trading aspects and who's got currency um, moving forward. But uh, you, you couldn't do it to him now. I think you just got to uh, ride it out with the big sis dog. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to disagree with you on that one, Matt. I, I don't think that. Um, I don't think that we're going to be able to build our team through drafting uh, like we did back in those days. Uh, in the early noughties. So the the draft is compromised and the first 20 draft picks are already accounted for through um, academies and father-sons. And as a result, we could trade the half the team away uh, and we're still going to end up getting picked um, pick 20s because they're all accounted for already, the top 20. But today so, we've got future picks you can trade for and that's what I would look at across two or three years. Um, I, I think it does. Set, there needs to be a new drafting strategy that the clubs are looking at. So anyway, just a little bit of out of the box thinking. So, yeah, look, I, I, I've been thinking about it a lot. Right? Do we do we start to go back and do that? I think it's worthwhile doing. I still think we've got some young blokes we haven't unearthed within our own team and haven't been able to get a shot in the side yet. Um, so I I don't know. I, I've I've kind of liked how we've traded players in who were of a certain calibre. Uh, and, you know, re- yes, we've had a crap year. Um, we started off with some promise and the wheels have come off. But I don't think that we've got a bad side. and I don't think we've got a bad list. I just think that it's been a crap year. And we, we'll write the year off and come next year, we'll be in a very different position. So uh, I don't know. I, I, I kinda, I'm kind of i kind of okay with, with where we're at and how we've got to this place. I, I wish we'd be in a better spot. But anyway, I'm a bit more optimistic about it. And yeah. Clarko, to, Clarko still the man? Clarko is still the man. Yeah. All right. Yeah. He'll, he'll call it. I'm confident in his integrity to uh, be a steward of the club. Yeah. He's been pretty calm yeah. and collected at the uh, press conferences, hasn't he? He yeah. has. Yeah, he's very measured. And and that's probably what's giving me a lot of um, uh, assurity, reassurance. assurances, yeah. yeah, reassurance about next year and where we're at and why we're in this position. I actually don't yeah. mind it. Now, now, Fender Maiden has said uh, Cousins a gun. Eight inside 50s. <laughs> that's, that's, that's phenomenal. Getting, getting the ball in the right spot of the ground, isn't he? He is. These he, young and he boys, was delivering it deep. He, he, I think he knew that game plan works for him to take the game on and to, to push it. He kicked it into space. He, he did some very smart things by foot. Yeah. Cool. There you now, go. Dominic, Mel Zimmel, Yep, go. Dominic Hartley is saying uh, Hart's played well. Frawley is not going to be back next week for mine. So I, I don't know how long he's out for. It was just general soreness. I think he was out. So uh, could that be code for something else? I thought he. Uh, I thought no. I thought it was a worse injury. I thought he dislocated well, his thumb or something. Can someone come on, mate? Us? You're the stats guru here, Chris. You meant to know all this stuff, mate. But that's yeah, okay. We'll, we'll take oh, it. Yeah. We'll take that at face face value. So. Um, all right, Craig Williams is saying his effort was great. All the ins are, um, are contributing. Scrimshaw played a great game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Lee Harris, uh, hard to see any player getting dropped after that performance. Yep. So you'd you'd yeah. like to see the team rewarded for their efforts and and leave it as is. Yeah, I'd love to see them leave the team as it was. I, I mean, I'd love to see Gunston back in and th- just to think, like if you if you took Tim O'Brien out and put Gunston in, whew. That would be a, a – I would really love that. I'd love to so, see that. So who had a better game, Patton or O'Brien? 
Mm. Oh, pattern. Yeah. All right. And here you go. So disposals, Jonathan Patton, seven. Tim O'Brien, six. Very no, yeah. Patton's, um, you know, it, you wouldn't call him a, a decoy, but just being able to be in the right places and draw the attention. Impact and, on and, the game. Patton and and he had, the game. Yes. Patton had a far greater impact on the game because he had two players on him as well. So he, he sucked up another player, which gave um, Tim O'Brien space to actually get the six possessions that he got. Yep. And, and two contested marks for Jonathan Patton, zero, Timmy, and uh, two score involvements, Patton to one, Tim. So, yeah, it, it's interesting how the, the little touches can still have such a big difference in the game. But, um, yeah, definitely Patton for mine. Ah, he was good. So, boys, what, what, who do you see coming back in next week um, and who would go out? Well, Gunston was just a, a back injury or something, wasn't it? Yeah, back so I think soreness. he was just being, yeah, soreness, just being rested for a week. Maybe, maybe Clarko did it on the short turnaround, possibly, because I think we're so. Who would go out for him? Turnaround. Well, Tim O'Brien would be up there, wouldn't you? I hope so. Gun, Gunston <laughs> being yeah. a, a tall marking target, you don't know. Well, he's he's a bit. He play. He's playing. He's having a great season. Brad thinks uh, Segs might get in. Yeah, to fill that tall forward. So, are you, are you going Segler or Gunston there, Brad? Oh well, I'd Gunston every day, mate, just because of his experience and he's yep. he's he's an all Australian player. So, yep. um, and and he's he's very consistent, Gunston. I don't I can't remember him having a bad game. So, um, yeah, absolutely, he would he would be the the priority over the, all of them. But if it were out of Tim O'Brien and Segs, I'd go Segler. Yep. I just would. He he clunks marks. I, yep. I would agree with a few on the line. Uh, yeah, possibly Strats out. Um, he played pretty well, but he's still below his best. It's probably one of his better games for the year. Uh, good on him for his few hundreds. But maybe Glass. There's a few on the line that are sort of thinking Glass might be uh, the one that's touch and go, and that's a fair call. I think he's played better than the other Connor, though. Yeah, he has. I, I can't see Connor Nash getting back in again. I, I can't. It's mind you, uh, who was it that we had on recently? Um, I think Jordan Lewis said there was a lot of upside for Nash, and he's excited to see what happened with him. Um, but he's got an op- he had an opportunity last week, and he just sort of it, it just didn't happen, right? So yeah. I agree. He's a physical beast, uh, and I'd love to see him get more skill and what could actually happen. But it's just it just doesn't seem to be clicking for him at the moment. Yeah. So my other thing was uh, we, we've been big fans of Finn, but I've been thinking about it. With O'Meara in, Finn's that big body in under player. I'm like, who in the in, in you know, Warpool, Mitchell, O'Meara, who is the in and under player that you want to take out that you'd give Finn McGuinness a run for? Well, I don't think you do, Matt. I think you turn them into outside players. You mm-hmm. turn so Finn he's got to. Years. Or Warple into an outside player, and uh, and I, I'm pretty sure that um, Warple is working on his outside game a lot more now. So because so he's you, just been a, a one-dimensional player, being an in and under, and he needs to learn to become an outside player. Yep, and, I'd love well, to say that. Does that mean that uh, Finns maybe his half a season of uh, yeah and, and an interrupted weird season? potentially being trained in a new position, but he's played a lot of on the ball as well in the reserves. Do yeah, you wait another I, year before you unveil him? Possibly. So I, mean, that, the role? Yeah. That, I mean, that's a good question. That's a really good question. I, I'd be curious to see what they're looking to do with him. But there's no doubt about it. The bloke's got a lot of potential. I'd be keen to see him play a game. Um, but yeah. if Cousins and um, uh, Will Day and uh, who else, uh, How these other midfielders are getting uh, games before him. He's still clearly got some more development to do, either yeah. um, maturity-wise or game style-wise. Yeah. So, and obviously we don't know what's going on there. Now, um, Craig Williams has uh, made an interesting point. He said, it's funny our midfielders seem to work better if one of Warps, Mitch, or Jago Amira aren't there. Uh, okay, cool. Now, Craig, yeah, it's, well, right now it seems like a fair call, but um, up until the start of the year, Every time they had played, they'd won 10 out of 11 games when all three of them were playing at once. So um, I, I don't know, Craig. I think that they've just got to have time to learn to gel together uh, and, and let it blend, you know, 
let it work itself out. I, th I think it's a bit more than that. Def definitely well, helps with our big boy back in the ruck and putting it down their throats. So giving yeah. them first, first use out of the middle. Yeah. yeah. One for the fans. Oh, yeah. if, if, you, if you haven't uh, got a comment in before or you're joining us for the first time, just put an FT or write first in your comments so that we can keep an eye out for you and, um, yeah, serve it up on a platter. Absolutely. Like big boy. All right, so... So the big Dom has weighed in. Dominic Thompson um, will turn into a smooth moving midfielder um, for mine, uh, to be honest, Will Day. Day uh, has that much time and space. We'll get some body and uh, we'll be the next Pendles. Oh, Pendles. Well, that's that's interesting. That's a big, big call, Dominic. But I, I can see it. But physically, I mean, the guy's a, a twig. I, I can't believe it. The guy's got like a 16-year-old. Pendles. Pendles is a twig. <laughs> He's got a 16-year-old's body. But he's, he's playing like a man. I don't. I mean, can you imagine if he gets another ten kilo of muscle on him um, as he as he um, grows over the next five years? He's going to be incredible. I can see it. I, I like that call. I think he's yeah. Yeah, six two. Uh, Pendles is one of the taller midfielders as well. So uh, Will Day's got a bit of height there too. Yeah, hit the gym. Will. Yeah. Yeah. Dave Cochran saying the same. Will Day level headed. Um, Skillford. Skillful, awesome footballer in um, in the making. I completely agree. I think he's an All-Australian in the making all day. Yeah. So it'd be great to see how he develops. Um, yeah. George Mehas has said um, McAvoy was awesome, had massive impact in the way he played. Those hit-outs, he was great. Guys, I love the game, but I was so angry. I was just so angry. My head wanted to explode during that game. Just all those calls going against us. We had 14 um, umpiring decisions against us in a row. Hmm. Anyway. Got to give credit to Port. They, they stepped it up when they needed to and, and we're winning the contested ball in that last quarter. So what about we, we, uh, we just run out a bit of steam, I think. So what did you think of uh, Bruce and Wingard's games? Bruce Definitely was Bruce. outstanding. Mate, Pepper was breaking through everyone's tackers. He was running through everyone, and the only one he couldn't run through was Punky. He yep. couldn't get past him. No one gets past Punky. It reminded me of when uh, Cyril was in the team. No one could get past Cyril. Speaking of Cyril, his uncle was on <laughs> Triple M and said that he's looking to come and making a comeback. Do you put any um, credibility into that statement at all? Well, it's created a bit of excitement, that's for sure. Um, it's hard to see, but you never know. He, he looked pretty fit in the photo. so. And he and was I'll holding start. a Gold Coast Suns jersey. Talk, mm. Talking at the Suns, uh, yeah. So I, mean, I think I've gone on the record of saying I'd nearly cry if I saw him in any other colours than the brown and gold. But um, look, very exciting. Bruce is excited. Oh, yeah. mate, if he came back, how good would that be? I saw some comments on some of the, the pages about that, and they're like, uh, I think it was our page even, they, they said, oh, come on, if you, we don't want to be bringing an old player back in. But it's like, yes, that guy, yes, you do. Cyril, yes, you do. It's, it's yeah. like bringing back Gary Ablett or it's like bringing back Judd or it's um, Burgoyne. You know, yep. it, it, it's the you would get another five years out of Cyril if you wanted. So Almost, he'd be yeah. more reliable than um, building a, a junior, a young impacting, guy. Yeah, impacting game for you know, possessions, just that 12-odd possessions a game. Yeah, there's hardly been any better. Absolutely. Yeah, just score involvement, forward pressure acts, just, yeah, you name it, he does it. Yep. Yep. Probably, cool. probably take more marks than our Timmy O'Brien too. Well, um, <laughs> just a few. He'd probably take a few of the grabs that uh, when Cyril goes up for him too. <laughs> hey, um, if you if you're just joining us and you haven't seen us on here before, don't don't forget that you can follow us on Facebook. Um, if you if you haven't um, if you're not following us or you haven't liked us yet, uh, jump on after this um, and make sure you follow us. Also, keep in mind that we are on Twitter, we're on Instagram, and we're also on YouTube now. So if you're watching us from the first time from, from Twitter, welcome. We've got a few comments there, so welcome aboard, guys. And also um, the YouTubers as well, welcome aboard. Uh, if you're not following us on any of those platforms, make sure you jump on and, and give us a follow, hey, because um, we want to get those, uh, those viewers up, and you, it means you can also catch us from any platform as well. So, um, And I've got it down there in the, 
the little ticker thing. We had uh, uh, Stath Hawker a while back asking if, um, through Twitter, is Smith a chance to get back in? So, Isaac. Well, yeah, where's he, the was he? Was he a hammy? What was he? Angry uh, Chris, on, Blake. Chris you're, you're meant to be the guy that knows all this stuff, mate. You've gone yeah, missing. Yeah, I'm normally all over it. Yeah, I've been busy, mate. <laughs> Homeschooling and still my head in. <laughs> we, we, we rely on you as the resident expert to have all this stuff, mate. And you're asking us the questions. Remote the learning, top. stats, watching the Hawks. Yeah. We're, um, you know, we, we don't need him in the team, do we? No, we do. We want him back. Does, it, does oh, anyone yeah. know when Smith is back? Oh, shoulder. Shoulder is post pop Shoulder, thank you, Dave. Yeah. Thank you, Thank Tom. you. All right. It's a shoulder. That's right. It was pretty nasty. I, I think he's out for like three or four weeks, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't he? So Did he avoid, he avoid his surgery, did he? Is it, uh, let's uh, okay. Let's the fans know more band. than us right here. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. We need you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're making a really much better show. Tonight. You are the fourth it. host uh, tonight, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So jo- George Mehas is saying that uh, rumors floating on Twitter yesterday that Mitchell was going to request a trade at season's end. Why? Okay. Currency for him? What 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 currency is oh, there in Mitchell right now? Uh, no, which one? Tom. Which Mitchell? Good point, Tom. George. Give us come. Yeah, George. Which one? Already here, George. Because um, if you're talking Tom Mitchell, my heart sank, and I can't see that happening. But if it, if it were uh, Lewis Mitchell, then um, Mitchell or is Lewis. it Mitchell Lewis? Yeah, then that's okay. I, mate, I hope I hope that's Kill not the, the one. Program, Chris. <laughs> Scotty yeah, Williams, get that right yeah, up there. He's, he's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throw me some. Yeah, I'll, I'll cop that on the chin. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right. Cody doesn't Thank like you, that Scott. rumor, but that's yeah. fine. Thank you, Scott. Spot on. Chris, yeah, Scott, you, you're welcome to join us on the show, mate, if you want. Maybe you can take Chris's spot there for a while. Um, and Cody Mansell, I'm not going to repeat that because it's family friendly, but she's saying those rumors are absolutely um, boulder dash. So thank you, Cody. Appreciate that. Um, yeah. We've got the bombers I'll, coming I'll, I'll up. With it. I'll, I, could, I could do that. Oh, okay. Mitchell, Which trade if, yeah. Tommy Mitchell, Both? if there's currency yeah. there. So yeah, two first-round draft picks. I'd take one. I'd take two. I'd take two first-round oh. draft picks for him. Of course you I don't would, think we get I'll it. I'd take one and not be upset about it. But why? Because you think we have enough depth already in yep. the midfield? Yep. Yeah, I, I can see that. But uh, I, I yeah, think I, you, you might get a first and a third or something like that. Who knows? I'd be I'd wanting a, a brown low medalist. A Brownlow medalist of that caliber. He's two first round draft picks every day. After the injury, though, he's he's not quite back to Brownlow, but yeah, interesting. We'll, we'll, I think he we'll have this week. chat. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's say if you if you trade him, um, hit the hit the uh, the laugh button for us. If you'd keep him, hit the heart button. Mash that heart button. All right. I want to see what you guys oh, yeah. say. Or right. if you're getting yeah. good currency, this is it's, it's an emotional question. It's very hard, isn't it, Pants? Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Marty, Marty McLeod, no way. No, no way. Yep. I wouldn't do it. I'd do it for two, I'd do it for two first round draft picks. That's it. So okay. Um Dom's yep. Dominic agrees with me. Thank you, Dom. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Dom and I are like this, mate. <laughs> so uh, so on to the bombers game. Uh Thursday night. So we yep. it, it's a four four o'clock odd four forty game. So we'll be on straight after that. Um, Brad, what do you think against the Hawks, oh, Chris? I, if we played oh. like we did yesterday, we will win. We will win every game if we play like we did yesterday, without yep. a doubt. And the umpires are giving us a fair shake. Performance, yeah. I would have been saying, yeah, we're up the up the uh, the creek without a paddle, but yeah. That's given me a lot of confidence, that performance. So, yeah, I would really love to uh, rub it in the faces of my Essendon friends and, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, the victory. That'd be great. Look, I'll say this, boys. We're, we're, I'm seeing a pattern with us now over the last four years. When we're up against one of the best teams, we play well. When we're up against a mediocre team, we lose them. And as a result, you, you add all those up by the end of the year – we miss finals, and we come good the second half of the year, and it's frustrating. It's really, really frustrating at the moment. So, and we'll all get excited about next year because oh, look, we knocked off this team, we took it up to that team, and then it's like, 
I just really hope that we start to break that cycle um, for next season. I just, Which I just is, really do. That's a good observation. I, I can't really um, fault that too much you know, on the spot. I think, um, and then we've got the Bombers who are decimated by injury at the moment, then Adelaide. So you're right, again, we'll come good. We'll be looking mm. the part and uh, we'll be like, oh, geez, if only we just made it. Yeah. To finals. That's what I was thinking last season. If only we'd made it. So, and if we keep doing that every year and we finish ninth, oh, it's going to do my head in. Mind there you, you Richmond did that. Richmond did that for a very long time and then they broke the, the drought. Let, let's go yeah. back to this trade, this trade that Scott's thrown up to us. Uh, Tommy Mitchell, uh, uh, yeah. On par with uh, someone like Kelly or Coniglio, would you um, get Coniglio in the team for um, Mitchell? Straight swap? Not that's going to happen, but you'd do it, wouldn't you? Yep. Yeah. Oh, younger. If it's a different role, Coniglio is another midfielder. So why why would you? If we, yeah, he doesn't have the injury. <laughs> I'm being really harsh. I, I, yeah, but the injury hasn't held him. Isn't holding him back in midfielder. That's what we need. There you go. We need golf. Look, I, I like Mark Fitzsimmons, what he's saying. Um, Gold Coast can give us Matt Ra- give us Raul or Mitch for Mitch. That's <laughs> gonna, that to me is a fair trade. I'll I'll, I'll take Raul and they can have both uh Mitch Mitchell's things. <laughs> I'll give I'll give him <laughs> yeah, we'll chuck in we'll chuck in the other Mitch, is it? <laughs> right now, sorry. I oh, gotta have a little bit of fun, guys. Go go with us. Um uh, one thing with CJ though, he I love his how hard he goes. Will contest everything. He's not um, staying on his feet at times, and he's also um, sometimes that ball comes in fast, and he's not like got, hasn't got a vice like grip, so he gets tackled or a bit of pressure, and he's just spilling it. Oh, as soon as he gets those couple of things tweaked, look out! He's going to be a great player for us going forward. It's it's only what his third game ever. I think two and, last and season, second this season, wasn't it? So something like yeah, that. Yeah. So he's he's playing like that already. So yeah. the kid is at incredible. Um, yeah. I, I'm really liking him. So anyway, boys, uh, we've gone over time. We'll wrap it up there. Um, so just remember, follow us on Facebook if you're not already. Tag a mate. Um, we're going to be back here next Thursday. And, Matt, did you say we're going to be back after the game next Thursday? I will be on after the game or 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock. We'll let you know. We'll let you know. Yeah. But, yeah, it'll Fair be after the game. game. Yeah, and uh, let's hopefully the uh, unsociable Hawks turn up against the Bombers, which I'd like Good to see call. too, Glenn Nelson. Good call, mate. And uh, thanks for joining us. Tag him, mate. Tell him to get on uh, and watch us here on uh, either Facebook, Twitter, and uh, YouTube. That's right. Enjoy, you can't stream enjoy, to Instagram. So. And join you as the fourth host. Thanks tonight. We needed you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night. Ciao. Cheers, guys.